Hello, my gentle and, of course, very modern apes. My name is Erica. Uh, this is Guts at Gibbon, and what we do here is talk about the latest discoveries in science that I find interesting, and we debunk pseudoscience, and now we also act as a watchdog for science in politics, I guess. This is actually my first time sitting down and recording a video in like two months. I had a lot of videos in my backlog saved up and ready to go because my holidays are always extremely tumultuous and I always spend them traveling. And then the beginning of the semester is always extremely hectic, getting ready to start teaching and then teaching again and getting grants ready to send off. More on that later. And so here I am seated back in front of my usual set and we have a lot to talk about. First and most obviously, I got a new hat and it has the little March of Progress that is now my channel banner on it that I drew. And second, of course, is that I got a new shelf, and it has all my smaller skulls on it. Third is that several of my YouTube dreams have come true. I'm approaching 150,000 subscribers, which is crazy. I got to collaborate with Lindsay Nicole on her That We Know Of series. I talked a little bit about the neogene and primate and hominin evolution specifically over there. Enormously prolific video essayist Folding Ideas or Dan Olson did a video called Man Tracks, a true story of fake fossils on young earth creationism. And I got a special thanks at the end. Look, Gary, there I am again! Look! Casual Geographic did a video on how awesome Gibbons are. Finally, some recognition. The school system's failing and this is proof. Did you know the average kid in America doesn't know about this harmonized homunculus? Arguably one of the greatest gifts nature ever gave. Yet they remain disrespected and unaccepted. Those are probably the top three things that have happened to me uh, recently. And number four, of course, the current presidential administration has emboldened the religious right into resuming their multi-century long crusade against evolution and science generally. Now there is a lot to unpack there, and this is not a political channel, but we live in a time where politics and science are so thoroughly entangled with one another that you kind of can't talk about one without talking about the other. Science and politics have always been in close proximity to one another, of course, because policy influences science and science influences policy. But the ways in which these two areas of human society are currently clashing, and they are in fact clashing with one another, is kind of unprecedented. We could talk about the stalwart climate change denial and related policies which impact not just people here in the United States, but people abroad as well. A stance that they have taken despite the fact that the overwhelming majority of scientists, over 97%, agree that anthropogenic climate change is not just happening, but is happening at such a speed that if we don't get ourselves under control here, we will face consequences akin to some of the largest mass extinctions that have ever happened in this planet's history. We could talk about the federal grant funding pause that impacts the NIH and the NSF, which are the sources of research money for scientists all over the United States, something that also impacts the whole world because the United States is one of the largest producers of research globally. We are at the forefront and have always been cutting edge. Scientists who rely on grants, which is to say virtually all scientists that are not privately or personally funded, are impacted in their ability to actually carry out their research and in their ability to pay their rent and for their groceries. Looking at this administration's previous recommendations for budget cuts to the NIH and the NSF in the first go-around, as it were, I do not suspect that we will see the NSF and NIH fully restored at all but I certainly hope that I'm overreacting. I'm not even close to qualified to talking about the insane assault on medicine from trans healthcare to vaccines. To keep myself sane, I will not speculate on where the administration is going to go or on its fickle whims generally. And instead, I would like to turn and focus on something a little more specific, something that you've probably already seen on social media that has to do with the title of this video. Last week, Post began a appearing on social media of various types talking about how Iowa's Board of Education was removing climate change and evolution from their education standards. Before I could even look into the subject, another post came on to my Blue Sky feed, which contained a survey put out by the Board of Education to give your feedback on what you thought 
of these new revised standards. Even the prospect of reducing coverage on climate change and evolution in science classes had me responding to this survey. And it was in reading the advanced feedback options that I realized what was actually going on, something that official reports had already outlined. You see, the Iowa Board of Education is not proposing the removal of concepts with relation to climate change or evolution. It's weirder than that. They're proposing to remove the words climate change and evolution, opting instead to replace them with climate trends and biological change over time. After you take the survey, you get the opportunity to ask to provide more detailed feedback regarding the specific standards. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. What you're gonna wanna do is say that you want to review the life science standards, click next again, and it'll take you to the science standards revision survey. And it'll be each of their major revisions that they propose about DNA and protein synthesis, about hierarchies of life, multicellularity, homeostasis, photosynthesis, mitosis, meiosis, basic concepts in ecology, and so on and so forth. But then things start to get a little weird. They start to get a little strange. So like I said, I took the survey immediately when I saw that a survey was available to provide feedback at the prospect of reducing or removing climate change education or evolution education from state standards in Iowa. So I started the survey. I went to the more advanced uh, feedback option. I started reading what these propositions actually were. Again, what was actually happening was already outlined by official reports, but this is how I first ran into it. I'm reading all these standards. I'm going so far so good. And then I run into this one. This is the first one that sort of made my eyes open a little bit wider. It's LS27, which they say here as a standard aims to help students design, evaluate, and refine a solution for increasing environmental sustainability and biodiversity. Uh, cool. Yes, that's great. They clarified a bit more over here. Environmental changes can upset an ecosystem and threaten the survival of some species. Examples may include habitat changes, pollution, invasive species, and climate trends. Really, trends in climate. You mean like like the climate maybe changing, maybe too quickly? They say sustainable ecosystems rely on biodiversity to survive. And later they elaborate on this more. They talk about how quick changes in the environment can result in mass extinctions. They're talking about climate change. And they even talk about human influence on ecosystems in things like climate change. They just don't want to call it climate change. They do the same thing with evolution on LS4-2 as we scroll down, where they say is the goal, construct an explanation based on evidence that the process of biological change, that's evolution, primarily results from four factors. One, the potential for a species to increase in number. Two, the heritable variation of individuals in a species due to mutation and sexual reproduction. Three, competition for limited resources. And four, the proliferation of those organisms that are better able to survive and reproduce in the environment. These these are just like Darwin's specific observations as outlined in Origin, and it's being called the biological change instead of evolution. They do it again when they elaborate over here on natural selection and adaptation. They talk about the necessities for natural selection to be at play and say the process of natural selection results in the biological change of a species. You mean like it's evolution? They say biological change over time is the interaction of four factors, potential for a population to increase its numbers, genetic variation of individuals being present, competition for limited survival supplies being present, only those who can survive in the environment are able to reproduce and proliferate or are able to do it better, I will add myself. The standard boundary does not include other mechanisms of biological change, such as genetic drift and gene flow through migration. You guys, d those are mechanisms of evolution, definitionally. They just don't want to call it that. Now, what's crazy about this to me is these standards have not been revised since 2015. And it seems to me like what happened is whoever was in charge of revising these standards was, as I sort of alluded to earlier, a part of this religious right group of people who don't think climate change is happening or shouldn't be a concern and don't like evolution. So I think they just went through this standard list and control F for climate change to replace with climate trend and control F to evolution to replace with biological change because evidently, 
They missed one. In this one on your screen now, LS41, we can see that in this section for content clarification, they say each of these types of evidence, like shared DNA, similar body parts, and developmental stages, help us see how species evolved from common ancestors. This is the only reference that I could find of evolution in this entire standards, despite the fact that biological change appears over and over and over again. So the only thing I can think of as to why evolved is okay, but evolution is not, is because they were just control F and replacing. It's very reminiscent to me of the time that intelligent design advocates tried to get intelligent design into schools, and so they took their creationism textbook, control f for creationists to replace with design proponents, and ended up with this horrible amalgamation, this transitional species, the C design proponent cysts. Creationists use the control f replace function without outing themselves as creationists challenge level impossible. So this is very different from what was being proposed on social media, where Iowa was proposing to remove evolution education or climate change education from their science standards. But that does not mean that this change is harmless. Climate change education is obviously very important, and it's important that we use the language that scientists use if we want kids to be able to grow up and communicate with these scientists. This move to change climate change to climate trend is a political one, in my opinion, and it's strictly to either protect this school from the wrath of an administration that is hostile towards discussion of climate change, or an intentional attempt to reduce public education on what climate change is and what we're doing to exacerbate it. Of course, it's getting harder and harder to pull the wool over people's eyes when one half of the country is on fire and the other half is underwater, but that doesn't mean that the stakeholders of big oil and gas won't try their damnedest. And that starts with our kids. But believe it or not, evolution education, and in particular comprehensive evolution education, is also vital for the success of students when it comes to pursuing STEM subjects later in life. One study suggested that comprehensive evolution education increases a child's ability to get a job by 23%. But putting aside the necessity of using the proper language within science when communicating science, why is this happening? Certainly there are motivations to not teach climate change or evolution if you are a member of the religious right. But why just change the name? Why still teach the concepts? I'll tell you what I think. I think that this is a foot in the door. I think that if passed, this would make it a lot easier for religiously motivated educators to avoid talking about climate change or evolution virtually altogether. This already happens in Southern states right now with education standards that demand talking about climate change by name and teaching evolution as a concept using the proper terminology. Teachers can skip these topics altogether because it's not like there's an education brigade that will bust down their door and make sure that they're teaching students what they should be teaching them, the education that they are entitled to so that they can succeed when they reach higher level education, especially if they want to pursue STEM subjects. And I know this because my own students tell me that this happened to them. I teach biological anthropology both at the lab level and at the honors lecture level at my state university in a southern state. Like, I just can't think of another reason, another explanation for doing this, for keeping the definitions, but changing the names, the names which have been politically charged for several decades now. But this is so dumb. Like, functionally, it's such a dumb thing to do. It would be like teaching a physics class class, but not encouraging teachers to use the word gravity, instead opting to replace it in the new standards with the pulley-downy force. I think it is naive to propose that this has anything other than a religious right motivation behind it. And I support this proposition by looking at other things which are also happening right now. The Supreme Court just agreed to hear a case out of Oklahoma, an argument for using taxpayer dollars that are for public schools to fund public religious schools. And I sincerely doubt if this does come out in their favor that creationist schools will be the exception. 
Are we looking at, right now, the revival of the fight to get creationism taught in science classes in public schools in the United States? I don't have the answer to that question. I do know that we're going to find out, one way or another, whether we like it or not, we're going to find out. And I think there is a great irony that this should happen on the 100-year anniversary of the Scopes Monkey trial and the 20-year anniversary of Kitzmiller versus Dover, the trial that deemed intelligent design to be repackaged creationism, not science, and not appropriate to teach in science classes in public schools. I am optimistic that that is not what is happening, and I am even more optimistic that if it is, we will beat them to a pulp in court again. But the fact that I'm having to make this video at all is concerning to say the least, and we should all be vigilant. This is just a short little video because I needed to talk about it, one, and I also needed to get something out because I haven't gotten something out in quite some time and I haven't sat down to do a video, to film a video in quite some time. The reason for that is because I am working on several very large videos. One of the scripts is over 50 pages and I'm still writing it. I have no idea how close to done it even is. So expect several sort of documentaries from me in the next few weeks or at most months. I'm excited to share them with you. And I wanted to let you know where I'm at on those projects because some of you have been emailing me uh, wanting to know when I'm going to be putting more videos out and the Guts at Gibbon Blue Sky fan page was getting very close to crashing out. So this was meant to be something short, a little placeholder if you will, but if you like what I do, either in short form or long form, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's a free way to support the channel, and if you want to help me in a more financial way, you can join my Patreon. Patrons get early access to videos. When I'm on top of things, when I'm not on top of things right now. But they will, they'll get access to all this new stuff first. They did with the Doug Wilson stuff. I promise I'm on the upswing. But of course, in between all of these releases, I want to thank you from the bottom of my gentle and of course, very modern heart for being such a curious primate. And I'll see you real soon next time.